Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I'm out here again in my front yard vegetable garden, but it's not to harvest any of my summer veg. It's because I'm starting to plan for winter. Today I'm going to clear some plants out and get some garden beds ready for my winter plantings. So I'm going to pile them high with compost. I need to check on some seedlings I've got started and maybe even get some more going. And I thought I'd show you the little chart that I've made that helps me know what to sow and when. The beauty of no-dig gardening is that when preparing for new plantings, it's really simple. All I do is cut off all the old plants at their base and leave the roots in the soil. This way the soil doesn't become disturbed and you leave your microorganisms happy and ready to receive your new plantings. And that can go to the chickens. beetroot I forgot about. I'll take that in. I often leave these plants in the ground because it's food for my chickens. That one might be okay for dinner. A lot of these plants are just too riddled with the uh, cabbage moss caterpillar so that chickens will enjoy that extra protein. Oh, I'll just move this little guy somewhere else. There you go. Another good thing with no dig garden beds is that you don't risk compacting the soil by walking on the um, beds. The soil hasn't been dug so you haven't disturbed the soil structure, so there's no risk of you compacting it. We better leave these two undisturbed. I'll just cut this plant down and uh, move it to another spot so they can um, finish what they're doing. That's one bed cleared. I'm just going to tidy this up for the chickens and get on to the rest of it. Hello dudes. People consider nasturtium pretty evil because they do grow a lot. Very invasive. They've got all these little seeds that drop and uh, just grow new plants. But the chickens love to eat it. And if I'm not using it in the chicken yard, it's a great ingredient for um, the compost. And I also will just pull that out and mulch with it as well. So if there's a plant that wants to grow, permaculture, turning problems into solutions, you can always find a use for it. And that was pretty quick and easy to remove. They love all that stuff. I'll give them some more. In future, I hope to be able to just add compost in small amounts as we go and leave a lot more of the garden in place and just add in planting. But at the moment, because it needs such a big amount of organic matter on top, that's why I'm sort of clearing the whole lot. I hope to have perennial plantings and just kind of add in the annuals in between and leave more of the roots in the ground. But um, yeah, that's something I'll certainly be attempting to do down the track. We're getting there. You can see this is the reason that I want to 
really get this vegetation off and clear so I can really give a thick layer to cover all of this soil. Here you go guys, this is it. It's the next day and I'm back out here to, to clear my gardens a bit. I'm gonna rake off the top and then put down uh, my compost. I'm just doing a layer of mushroom compost, just a thin one. And then I'll be adding some um, compost that I've made. This compost is not well broken down and it's dried out quite a lot because of the weather we've been having. And it will make a great mulch, though not as beneficial as um, a fully broken down compost. It'll be great as the top layer. Go the way. Some bits that haven't broken down, that's a bit of uh, cardboard, I'll just throw back to the compost. Out the way, Rue. Now with that bed all covered nicely with compost, I'm just going to define this path a little bit more. I've got some leftover wood chips and I didn't get to this path because it was full of plants when I last did my wood chips. So I'm going to get that done now and then finish off the two smaller beds. path now is defined so I shouldn't be walking on the plants and uh, it'll keep the moisture in the ground a whole lot better now too. Now these two are two smaller beds and it's a bit hard to see where the path was because I had plants all through here. Um, I'll just have to redefine the path which follows on contour through there so this bed is actually quite narrow so I'll move all of this mulch and I'll be uh, putting that back on the top of the bed at a later stage. All right, so that defines the garden bed a little bit better. So I've got the um, paths following contour. You can see that follows through from the arch right through. And then again, I'll be redoing the wood chips through here. So the path will kind of follow through from over there and it'll be a lot more obvious. And then this little garden bed here is just kind of a, a tiny triangular bed just to fit in at the end there. All right, so we've just got a little bit of this mushroom compost left. Now that I've run out of the mushroom compost, for the, the lower compost layer, I'm going to be using this uh, more aged compost. It's really uh, well broken down and that'll be perfect right next to the soil. And then I'll put my old, um, younger compost on top as the mulch layer. There's a lot of sugarcane mulch on this garden bed. So I'm just going to carefully remove that and just put that in my little cart so that I can put it back on again uh, when I've got some plantings in. Okay, now to find some more compost. Another place I source my compost is in the chicken yard. I throw in lots of um, 
vegetable scraps, kitchen scraps, all sorts of things to these chickens. And at least once a year, I'll clean out um, the compost because it forms underneath all of this. from the chicken yard is fairly dry and it's a bit difficult to get out so I might save that for later on in autumn. On the last bed I'm just going to put down the coarser compost. That's the compost all on. I'm just going to pop some more wood chips in these little paths here, just so it's a thicker layer, so it's more absorbent of any rain that falls on it. Well, that's my garden beds all prepared now. So I'm going to leave them for a little bit. I've been learning and been reading the comments from some of my viewers that it might be wise just to prepare your beds leave them for a few days, let the birds uh, go to town on whatever worms or anything that's in there before putting the seedlings in. And it's actually really hot today too. So I'm gonna wait for cooler weather to get my seedlings in the ground and get some seeds started here as well. In my greenhouse here, I've got my two trays of seedlings that I've already started for my winter garden plantings. This one I started about two and a half weeks ago and this one just a week ago. So they're starting to uh, grow nicely. So this is a nice little red ruby spinach. I've got various brassicas and an Asian green section. And then with this second tray here, I've planted um, a few different types of beetroot and I've got more broccoli um, and cabbage. And there's a, a couple of collards that are coming through. So I'm going to get a third tray going. First thing I need to do is fill my tray with my potting mix. Now in this bucket, I put in all of my old um, potting mix from um, plants that um, haven't really worked out. And I've added in some mushroom compost and also some worm castings. So I'll fill up this tray with this. I'm trying to avoid buying any more um, potting mixes or seed raising mixes because they all come in plastic. And um, I did notice that my worm castings grew my got some volunteer um, tomato plants like really well just out of the worm castings. So I'm just going to experiment with um, different mediums for growing and just see what works best and just sort of produce more of that for future. I'll give that a good water and probably wait for five minutes or so for that all to absorb in and then I'll get my seeds in. Now I've never been really that great at sowing seedlings and it's still something that I'm perfecting. Um, you know, I'll get the seeds in and then I'll totally forget about them and they'll all die or they'll go leggy because I haven't given them enough light. So it's something I really have to work on. But to help me know when to sow things, I've just done this little chart here. So I've done um, the, the months of the year here and then all the plants that I'm likely to want to grow on a regular basis. And I've put here just lines um, according to whether I um, sow the seeds in trays inside or direct sow and then when to transplant. So these green ones are everything in February that I can start as seedlings in the greenhouse. This one here is you can sow that direct. So that's some leeks. So I'll be able to put those out in my garden. And then uh, this is the, the, the window of opportunity for transplanting them. Now it is just a guide. And I do like to observe what's going on out in the garden. For instance, on here I've got my spinach, which is direct sow in March. 
but I've noticed that there was a plant that seeded and spread its seeds everywhere and at the end of January those seedlings were coming up really well and um, I've got a whole crop of spinach that I didn't expect. So I mean it depends on the microclimate, it depends on the weather for the year and what that's doing. So this is a guide and I'm going to be tweaking this as time goes on. If I find something works really well on a regular basis at a certain time of year I'll certainly be making a note of that but it, it's just an easy way to um, know what to throw in the ground so each month I'll just go down and, and see what there is that I can do and put in the ground. So I've got my tray here and I've decided what seeds I want to sow and I've written out my little tags because I like to put them in and um, then put the seeds in so there's no messing anything up. So I've got eight rows and I've got eight different seeds that I'm going to get in today. So I'll start with my red cabbage. I'll just make a little hole and then I'm just going to top this over with a bit of um, worm castings at the end. Just a matter of going through and getting my seeds in. I try and put in a couple in each just so I've got choice of plants. Now I've got all the seeds in here already so all I'm going to do now is cover that over with some of my potting mix and just put a little sprinkle over the top of it all. All right and that's all and I will just give a little bit more water. It's great to get another tray of seedlings on the go and hopefully I'll be able to add these to that new garden bed soon. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.